everybody, Jamie here from the Enigmatic Nomadics YouTube channel. I say that every time I start a video because about 70% or more of the folks that uh, watch the videos are not subscribers according to the metrics that I get uh, about uh, the channel. So if you're not a subscriber and you would care to see this kind of content, please do click the subscribe button and that little bell beside it and you'll be notified as uh, videos come out. Right now it's mostly gonna be getting the school bus with a tow package on it. I'll be showing you all that, including a backup camera, how I installed it as much as I can of how I installed it. And heading down to Mexico and getting, figuring out this drone that I bought. But uh, right now I wanna talk about something a little bit different. Uh, there were so many good comments in the last video that I went down. I don't usually re respond to every single one of them just because of the sheer time it would take, but there were so many good ones that I wrote notes about it and I wanna just talk about those a little bit. If I don't get to you, it's just you know a time thing, but I wanna talk about a few things that's going on. Right now, waiting for uh, some things to come in the mail to be able to head down to Mexico that are gonna take some time to process. And waiting for it to get warmer. It's so cold here. It was, it's like 33 degrees at night for the low and in the 50s for the high. And this is like Havasu. It should be a lot warmer than this. So it's unseasonably cool. Makes me that much more eager to get down there, but that much more bashful about going outside and doing outside projects. Most <clears throat> Mostly just been going to the gym and coming back and working on a few things. But today's a no gym day, so I can just focus on some uh, very serious matters that I need to get cleared off the ledger before heading down there, such as filling out the uh, post-event paperwork with uh, the BLM office, and I need to pay them because when I use their land for things, they want a percentage of revenue that I generate from uh, YouTube during that time. So I've got to get that paperwork filled out. I also want to get my 2018 taxes completed before I head down there for two reasons. Number one, uh, the the internet is not going to be as readily available as it is right here. I'm just sitting in the bus, got four bars, so this is pretty good. But uh, down there, it's a little bit more uh, work to get internet. A and B, I need to know where my finances stand because I'm waiting to pay uh, the IRS. I'm, uh, as a self-employed person, listed that everything that I make, I have to pay 15.3%. I don't want to make this video into a tax seminar, but uh, it doesn't matter if I make $1,000 the whole year, $10,000 the whole year. I know some people will tell you, well, if you don't make $12,000, you don't have to file. Well, guess what? If you're listed as uh, self-employed and you're listening, you have to pay 15.3% of everything. If you just make a grand that year, 15.3% has to go to the IRS. And that's how they pay you your Social Security when you uh, are eligible for it. So basically, they're just taking it, holding it, and then giving it back to you when you are when you decide to draw it. And 62 years old is the best time to draw it. Don't let anybody kid you and say hold out for more money because they have, you know, accountants doing actuarial tables till the end of time and they know what they're doing. Get it soon. So... There's, there's my tax seminar I didn't, didn't mean to put on, but I'm going to sign up with this uh, software program, and I can't think of the name of it. It's like EX something. i got to find out, but um, Kathy is an accountant, one of our friends out here that lives the traveling lifestyle, and she told me to get it, and so I'm going to download that get my taxes uh, all situated so I know what cash I have to go down there with and that my taxes are paid and that's off my uh, off my schedule. I got to do the uh, post uh, event paperwork. Haven't opened the drone out of the box yet. I got the nicest one I could find. Well, maybe not the nicest one, but a super nice one off of Amazon and it's still in the box over here. And I know as soon as I take it out, nothing's going to get done because I'm going to be wanting to play with that drone every day and get to know it and see the shots and put the card in my holy cow can you believe that oh let me try it like this and the waypoints i got this new software that doesn't even come with it that's an add-on uh so i can set up waypoints which is something that i'm not going to get into it but it's going to make videos really super cool uh but here's my notes i, I don't usually write notes to, to talk but this time i did when i do videos um 
Camp Chef. Let me put a link to the Camp Chef. Somebody wanted to know about this stove, and so I'll put a link down to this exact stove from Amazon in the notes. I love it. I use it all the time. Pork tenderloin you can put in there. Heat up, you can get that uh, pre-made pizza from wherever you want to go and get it. Papa Murphy's, uh, Walmart, whatever. And... Anyway, there's a lot of uses. I don't have to tell you guys about uses for a stove. Camp Chef works, and it and it's legit. It's not a gimmicky thing. I've had it for mm, over a year, maybe a year and a half. Let's see. Uh, drilling the fan hole. Sandra, Kathy, some other people mentioned. Thank you. You're right. I missed that. That's one of the things I like about putting up videos. You guys see everything. And so I do need to pull that... Uh, it's an ice maker. I do need to pull that back out and cut a big hole where the fan goes so it can breathe. And I've got a hole saw kit, and I even bought some bigger uh, hole saws uh, besides the ones that come with the kit. So I should be absolutely fine on that. But I wanted to thank you guys for pointing that up cause, out because I didn't think about it. The story of Savannah. Folks, folks want to know about how Savannah came about. Uh, I was married. If you guys watched the channel a long time ago, I was married to Kendall. She lost her dog in a very tragic way. Her dog got a hold of a mole in a residential neighborhood that somebody had put poison out to kill the moles. She got the mole, she got the poison. So please think about that and don't use poison if you're in a residential area. Get your moles a different way or rats or whatever because, you know, it, it co-mingles with the animals. The dog passed away. I found Savannah online, one year old, on Craigslist. Went and got her. She kind of looked a little bit like Kendall's uh, original dog, a little bit smaller. Oh, look, she's even in the shot. And um, got her, and the first thing Savannah said was, I don't know who this woman is, but I'm with you. And so when Kendall and I parted company, it was pretty much obvious that she was going to stay with me. And she will be 11 years old in April. You know how you guess with dogs, you don't have their birth certificate. Been with me 10 years. Best dog, I've had a bunch of dogs, all dogs are cool. Best, smartest dog, low maintenance, never wakes me up early in the morning because she wants to go potty. If I am in bed till noon or one, she's in bed till noon or one, but she has no problems getting my attention. If she needs to go outside for a bathroom emergency or if she needs water or if she needs food, she just comes up and does this thing where she begs and I'm like, okay, food, water, what's going on, what's going on? Sometimes it's just she wants to be pet. But that's the story with Savannah. That's how I got her. Let's see. Dan wants to know what I use for connectivity in Mexico when I get down there for internet. There's two ways you can do it that I do it. There's probably a bunch of ways. The number one funnest way is to go to a small village, small town that has restaurants and get some fish tacos and use their Wi-Fi password. It's slow, it's like 3G, it's it's almost like dial up, but you're gonna be able to see your emails. If you have to upload videos, which I'm gonna have to do, it's gonna take a while, but you'll get there eventually. One thing about uh, restaurants in Mexico, in Baja, from my experience is, when you sit down to have a meal, I've never had anyone ever yet try to run me off. In the United States, we go out to have a sit down meal, what can I get you? You guys want some appetizers? What do you want to store for drinks? Okay, what do you want your entrees to be? Okay, did you guys want to see the dessert menu? Is there anything else I can give you or can I give you the check? I'm getting ready to get off and somebody else is going to take over. Can I go ahead and bill you out now? It's always, uh, uh, are you camping at the table? Mexico is like there's a section of books for you to read. They don't come check on you. Almost every time, if it's a laid back enough restaurant, I get up and say, um... Una más cerveza, por favor, because they're not always on top of you. And the thing is, they don't care. Like, they're not trying to run you off. Stay all day. So if you have to spend time uploading, the point is, a video, nobody's going to be going, come on, table seven, what's up, man? It's not like that. That's one of the ways I get internet. The other way I get it is Jetpack, which I'm using right now, a Jetpack thanks to Roy from uh, when we were up in Chico. Thank you, Roy, for this. It's Verizon. Verizon automatically converts to Telcel. Telcel is the Mexican equivalent of Verizon. When I crossed the border last year, it just automatically turns over to Telcel. It's not going to be as fast, 
but you're going to have internet in places where there's towers. Baja Mexico is not in a mad dash to throw towers up every couple, uh, uh, you know, 10 miles. So it's not going to be like the United States. So you get your air card from Verizon, switch over to Telcel, and go and have your fish tacos at a restaurant that has a Wi-Fi login. There's a lot of mountainous ranges on the coast of Baja on the uh, Sea Cortez side where I'm going to be and the towers only get so far because it's line of sight. That's a good thing because you ain't supposed to be on the internet all day when you're in Mexico. You're supposed to be enjoying Mexico, do your work, and then go find a place to upload it and have fish tacos. That sounds like the perfect plan to me. You don't want to be there checking your phone all the time or with somebody else trying to tell them a story. They're checking their phone the whole time. Mm, it's not supposed to be like that. So that's how the internet works in Mexico. What else do I have? ECA. I do have a... Thank you. And thank you for being a patron. I do have a carbon monoxide detector. I just haven't installed it yet. This van is very porous. <laughs> so I'm not super worried about exhaust in here. But I do have a carbon monoxide uh, detector that I need to install. Thanks for looking out for me on that. Terry, what's up, Terry? I thought that I grabbed that uh, Latin music down from YouTube because I don't want to put stuff up that's going to be copyright protected. But uh, I went and checked, and I couldn't find it in YouTube. Uh, Terry is a friend of mine that we meet up sometimes in different places. He's been to some van builds, pitching in, and uh, hooked me up with some music at one point. He's a good dancer. I've got a video of uh, an interview for him on my uh, on my channel. And it shows him dancing and tells a little bit about Terry. Um, Mary, thanks for always commenting. I really appreciate it. I'm running diesel in this thing. And if I just hit all of the fuel stations uh, as they come up, I should be fine. Uh, Jim, thank you for the heads up on the propane. You said you worked down in Florida at a propane place. I just try to be careful. I used to be a plumber. And so I hooked up a lot of, you know, natural gas lines. And so I worked with a lot of black pipe and Teflon tape and dope and a lot of uh, pressurized fuel sources. And I just try to use good judgment. I appreciate you looking out for me. I think that's it for this. I'm going to just go ahead and, and send this up. I'm still working on what? What? You can say it. Your shirt off. Oh, Shannon <laughs> wants me to take my... Shirt off. I'll take my shirt off in a in a video. This is Jessica in the background. She uh, is being bashful about being on camera. But guess who's not bashful about being on camera? You guys know Cammy and Tamara from a bunch of stuff on the channel. Uh, most notably for Cammy, the uh, women's safety video series that I did. They're like really close to coming down with us. I hope they do and they'll be on camera for sure and who knows maybe Jessica will too by the time it's all over with so lots of fun stuff on the horizon Shannon I'll probably take my shirt off at some point <laughs> see you guys on the next upload and I'll see if I can be a little more doing stuff and a little less uh, yapping alright see ya